All right, your next witness. Yes, Your Honor. Plaintiff calls Edward White. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. White. Good afternoon, Counselor. Uh, will you state your name, full name for the record? Yes, Edward White. Where do you reside? Los Angeles, California. How are you employed? Uh, many years ago, I founded uh, Edward White & Company, Certified Public Accountants, and I am the managing and senior partner of the firm. What is a certified public accounting firm? A certified public accounting firm is authorized by a particular state, in my case, California, to audit financial information and to certify the statements related thereto. What's the nature of the work that's done at Edward White & Company? It's diversified. It includes providing uh, tax and related compliance services, that is to do the tax returns for the clients. Uh, that's both fiduciary, corporate, individual, as well as partnership work. We also are involved in providing uh, financial statements for financial institutions and for governmental agencies. Uh, we, in addition to that, have a business management department and provide a wide variety of services in that capacity. Are you the Edward White of Edward White & Company? Yes, I am. Who do you employ? We employ a very talented group of professionals that have really amazing credentials. They have graduate degrees from NYU and USC in business administration as well as taxation. Uh, many of my colleagues have been with the firm for over 25 years in one case for 35 years. I'm very proud to be associated with this group of people. Who are your principal clients? We represent approximately 100 high net worth individuals and the companies that they own and operate. In addition to that, we do work for governmental agencies such as the Department of Justice, the State of Alaska, the State of California, and the City of Long Beach. What's your educational background? I started my college career uh, utilizing the GI Bill. I served four years in the Air Force and was fortunate enough to have that opportunity. Um, my undergraduate degree was in business administration and I have a master's degree in business administration from the University of Southern California. After completing my graduate degree at USC, I studied uh, several, I took several tax classes, corporate, fiduciary, estate and gift, and uh, subject matters such as that. Do you have any other experience with education? Yes, I was a former professor of accounting and taxation at California State University located in Los Angeles, California. What kind of work do you personally do? The work I do is primarily transaction oriented. Um, acquisitions of companies, dispositions, that is buying or selling a company arranging financing with uh, large financial institutions, uh, consulting with clients where they feel it's appropriate for me to be involved, uh, assisting my colleagues. As I mentioned to you, we have approximately 100 high net worth individual clients, and there's always something that, that um, I can contribute to. Do you hold any certifications? Yes, I'm certified in financial forensics by the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. I'm also um, a member of the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants and the California Society of Certified Public Accountants. And of course, I'm a certified public accountant. What are financial forensics? That's an attempt to ascertain not only the facts, but what transpired uh, as it relates to financial activity. So you do a study based upon financial records. You then look at contracts. You look at other financial information in an attempt to uh, once again, not only ascertain what the results were, but what caused the results. 
Have you ever previously testified in court? Yes, I've been accepted as an expert witness in both the California court and the federal courts, and I have testified um, in matters involving the Department of Justice and the FBI. Okay. Do you serve on any boards, or have you served on any boards? Objection relevance, Your Honor. This witness is not being proffered as an expert in this case. All right. Wasn't designated. Is this just a fact witness and not an expert witness? A fact witness and it goes to credibility. I'll sustain the objection. I think we can move on. Okay. Do you know Mr. Depp? Yes, I do. How did you come to know Mr. Depp? Uh, I met him because he was introduced to me by a senior executive at the Bank of California, Richard Smith. Do you work with Mr. Depp? Yes, I do. In what capacity? We are his business management firm. How long have you served in that capacity? By approximately six years. What does that role involve? Uh, processing, managing his financial affairs. Um, as you know, Mr. Deb is an amazing talent, internationally acclaimed for his work, but he relegated his financial activities to me and my colleagues. So we provide a wide variety of services for him. Do you do this kind of work for other people? Yes, we do. Numerous other clients. When did you first become involved with Mr. Depp? Approximately six years ago, uh, after the introduction from Mr. Smith. What was the nature of the work that you were to, that you were to perform for him? Initially, it was to perform a forensic study, evaluate his financial affairs, and to formulate recommendations on how he could manage his affairs in a more advantageous manner. After you conducted that analysis, what did you do? Uh, I met with Mr. Depp, the purpose of which was to share with him uh, the results of our findings and to make recommendations on how he could resolve the issues he was confronting. When was that meeting? That meeting was on April 21st, 2016. Who called the meeting? I did. I called the meeting because I felt it was appropriate to meet with Mr. Depp and to uh, discuss his affairs and to provide him with uh, opportunities and plans and strategies to resolve the issues he was confronting. Where was the meeting held? It was held at his offices in Los Angeles, California. Do you know approximately what time it began? It began at approximately 7.30, and my recollection is there were seven people in attendance, right. including Mr. Depp and myself. Was alcohol served at the meeting? Not to my recollection. I don't recall any alcohol being consumed. Did Mr. Depp stay for the entirety of the meeting? Oh, yes. He was very interested in the contents. He asked very thoughtful questions. Um, he was fully engaged and fully sensitive to the matters that we were discussing. Uh, did, did there come a time when Mr. St Mr. Depp didn't participate in the meeting? No, he was very actively involved. He did excuse himself on two or three occasions. It was my understanding that he was going to contact uh, Ms. Hurd and, and attempt to respond to her concerns and also address the fact that this was an extremely important meeting and that it involved his financial viability and that he felt it imperative to stay and address the issues I was discussing with him. When did the meeting conclude? At approximately 9.30. So it went for approximately two hours. At the conclusion of the meeting, what did you deserve, what did you observe as to Mr. Depp? Uh, that he was fully engaged once again. He thanked me profusely for not only addressing the problems, but he was excited about the fact that there was a strategy and plan to resolve the problems. Did he appear impaired to you in any way? No, to the Actually, contrary, uh, I found him had, to be. I'm sorry, sir, there was an objection. All right, what was the objection, I'm sorry? Leading. Leading? Just, I, I asked him for his observation what? as an uh, impairment. Well, if you want to ask, different, I'll sustain that objection, but you can ask another question. Did you make any observations as to Mr. Uh, Depp's potential impairment? It was readily apparent to me that he was actively involved in the conversation. He asked very thoughtful and prudent questions. 
he was genuinely interested, and once again, when he left, he thanked me profusely for not only addressing the issues, but formulating a strategy and plan to resolve them in a successful manner. Did you have, did you play any role on Mr. Depp's behalf with respect to the dissolution of his marriage to Ms. Hurd? Yes, I was actively involved in the negotiations of the uh, separation and the marriage dissolve. What role did you play in those negotiations? Well, in my capacity as his business manager, I understood his financial capacity and the tax implications associated with it. So I was actively involved in uh, addressing uh, those issues as they were forthcoming from counsel. Um, you mentioned tax implications. What are you talking about there? Excuse me? I think you just mentioned tax implications. What are you talking about there? Well, what I was talking about is that when Ms. Hurd began the negotiations, she was asking for approximately $4 million. That Objection balance then was foundation, increased. hearsay, black foundation, hearsay. These are requests made by Ms. Hurd and her counsel in a, in a conversation, in communications. Here, you, you want to approach for oh, a minute? Certainly. As a result of your uh, involvement on behalf of Mr. Depp in the negotiation, what was your understanding of what Ms. Hurd was looking for? She initially was looking for a consideration of $4 million, but her demand continually increased. It went from $4 million to $5 million. Then it went from $5 million to $5.5 million. Then it went to $7 million. And then it was $7 million, and she required, demanded that Mr. Depp also pay $500,000 to her attorneys. Then, after that consideration, she also said that all the community liabilities that were accumulated objection, during the Your course Honor. of the marriage, which approximated it, 13 Sorry, there's an objection, million. sir. Whenever there's an objection, I'm sorry. If you can't hear it, I'll, I'll let you know. Okay? Oh, thank you. Your yeah, Honor. no problem, this sir. This just goes into his allegations of what she said, which Your Honor just instructed. Uh, sustain the objection on that. He has no foundation to suggest that. No knowledge of that. Your, Your Honor, I, I, I understand that. I, I asked his understanding. All right, I'll, I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. May I continue? She'll tell you yes. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. He learns very well. <laughs> um, so the next demand was that all of the community liabilities that were unresolved approximately $13.5 million, that Mr. Depp had to pay those liabilities in its entirety. So at that point, she was demanding $14,250,000 of consideration, and then it got worse. The next demand was that all of this consideration be paid to her free of taxation. And counselor, for him to pay $14 million $14,250,000 to Ms. Hurd. That would require him to earn approximately Objection, $30 million. So far beyond the scope, so far beyond his foundation of what was discussed. All right, I'll sustain that last, last answer. All right. Next question. Did you make a proposal as to how payments would be made to Ms. Hurd? Yes, I did. And they were initially contemplated to be paid directly to the charities. The Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, for the benefit of the children who required severe medical service and to the ACLU. During the course of the negotiations, one of the demands, because the contract changed, 
was that the payments be made directly to Ms. Heard. Did you have any personal uh, involvement with either the ACLU or the Children's Hospital? Yes, I did. What was that? Uh, Mr. Depp directed me to issue two $100,000 checks directly to the Children's Hospital Los Angeles. I knew that he was involved and supported their efforts and appreciated his service. In addition to that, he directed me to contribute $100,000 to ACLU. In accordance with his instructions, uh, my colleagues drafted the checks, I executed them, and they were delivered to the two charities. Did you continue making payments to either of those charities on Ms. Hurd's behalf? No, in fact, I was chastised for making the payments by Ms. Hurd's counsel and told that the payments in the future uh, had objection, to go directly Your Honor, to this her. Is, this is clear hearsay. He's not I, answering the question. I would, I, I would ask for you to instruct him to answer the question no. and not expound upon his. I'll sustain as to hearsay. Thing. Next question. What role did you play with respect to the payments ultimately made to Ms. Heard? Um, we supplied the payments to Ms. Heard in accordance with the agreement, either on or before the date in which they were required to be paid. The first payments made to Ms. Heard was $2 million in 2017. Then in April of 2017, another payment of $1 million made payable directly to Ms. Heard was made. Then in August of 2017, another million dollars was paid directly to Ms. Heard. Uh, then in November, $500,000 was paid directly to Ms. Heard. My colleagues drafted those checks, I executed them, they were delivered on a timely basis. Therefore, in 2017, she was paid $4.5 million directly paid to her. Then on February 1, of 2018, she was paid the final installment of $2.3 million for total payments that went directly to Ms. Heard of $6.8 million. Do you know when this lawsuit was filed? Yes, it was filed in March 1, 2019. Okay. Were the payments that were made on Mr. Depp's behalf uh, directly to Ms. Heard the only economic benefit she received? Objection leading. I haven't heard the one. Go, I, I'll overrule the objection for us now. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, were, were, were the payments made on, uh, to Ms. Heard the only economic benefits that she received from the settlement agreement? No. As I shared with you earlier, Mr. Depp was required to pay $500,000 to Ms. Heard's counsel, which he did in a timely and respectful manner. He was also required to pay all the community liabilities. Uh, which accumulated during their 15-month marriage uh, was approximately um, $13,500,000. So he paid all the community liabilities. She paid none of them. That's why you have to aggregate the money that was paid directly to her, the money that was paid to her to the charities on her behalf, the money that was paid to her attorneys, and the relief of all these liabilities that she had that he had to satisfy. That's why I said to you, Counselor, that the total consideration paid to her was $14,250,000, and she demanded that that payment be made free of taxation, that Mr. Depp would have to satisfy all the tax liabilities. How long were they married for? They were married for 15 months. Okay. Um, were the payments that went to Ms. Heard the only uh, payments that you've made on Mr. Depp's behalf? No, we satisfied all of his obligations, so it was very customary for us to pay everything that Mr. Depp was obligated to pay. Are you familiar with an entity known as 2020 Wine Merchants? Yes, I am. What you, why are you familiar with it? It's a prominent purveyor of wine in Los Angeles, Angeles California. Foundation, hearsay. I don't see the hearsay, but I, I don't Foundation know. at this point. Can we pre uh, sure, your approach? sure.
All right. I think where we left off is I asked you, how were you familiar with 2020 wine merchants? And if that's not what I asked you, that's what I'm asking you now. 2020 is a uh, highly recognized purveyor of wine in Los Angeles, along with other companies. What, what involvement, if any, did you have with 2020? Um, I satisfied the liabilities that Mr. Depp incurred, which at the dissolve of their marriage was approximately $160,000. Uh, do you continue to pay Mr. Depp's wine bill? Uh, yes, I do. We pay all of his obligations, but his wine bill has, has shrunk to virtually zero um, because uh, he does not consume that much in the way of wine. He's made a few gifts around Christmas time, but his wine bill has gone to virtually zero. Are you familiar with a Spanish wine known as Vega Sicilia? Yes. How are you familiar with that? I know that it is a very expensive wine, and that I know that Ms. Hurd enjoyed drinking the wine. How much does it cost? The cost of the wine is approximately $500 a bottle. Were you ultimately uh, charged with uh, paying for the wine that was served on uh, at the birthday party on April 21, 2016? Yes, I was. We rendered Objective the payment foundation. for the balance. Oh, I'll overrule the objection. It's fine. How many bottles of Vega uh, Cecilia were served? At Miss Hurd's request, uh, she ordered five bottles of the wine and eight bottles of other wine. So a total of 13 bottles of wine. Thank you, Mr. White. I have no other questions at, right, this, cross, at this time. Cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Mr. White. Good afternoon, Counselor. Your firm has been paid millions of dollars by Mr. Depp and his company since you were first retained in 2016, correct? Correct. And in fact, you're being paid for the time that you're sitting on that witness stand today, aren't you? No. Well, you've char you charge the time that you spent um, in connection with legal proceedings in this case, correct? That's correct, but I charge for my time. Yeah, it, and I, it's the same time. You, you answer my question. Charge, in fact, you charge seven hundred and ten dollars an hour for your time, don't you, Counsel? If you let me complete my answer, I'll no, be happy I, to respond. Sir, uh, please just please try to stick to the question that I'm asking you. You've had you've had your chance to go well beyond the question being asked, but if you could just please stick to the question I'm asking, you would go a lot faster. Uh, could you, I don't think your microphone was on there. Well, it's not. It's not really badgering. It's not a. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. That's, that's all right. So just if you could answer the question that's asked. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, right. Your Honor. I, I start, let, me, let me start over, sir. You're, you, you charge Mr. Depp $710 an hour for the work that you do for him, don't you? That is my standard rate for all clients, and yes, I do charge that rate to Mr. Depp. And you gave a deposition in this case. Do you remember that on or around February 2nd, 2022? Yes. And... That day, you charged Mr. Depp $710 an hour for the time that you spent giving testimony that day, didn't you? Yes, I did. And you charged Mr. Depp $710 an hour for anything that you do in connection with his account, don't you? Yes, I do. You have about six people working on Mr. Depp's account, correct? Yes. And whether through you or one of your colleagues, your main contact with Mr. Depp and his companies is his sister, Christy Dembrowski, correct? No. Who is your main contact? Mr. Depp. One of your colleagues maintains active communication with Christy Dembrowski, correct? Could you ask a question again, Counselor? One of your colleagues maintains active communication with Christy Dembrowski, correct? No. All right, yes, sir. Thank you.
Mr. White, I've handed you the transcript from your deposition that you gave in this case on February 2nd, 2022. You remember that? We did it over Zoom? Yes, I do. Okay. And you, you swore to tell the truth in that deposition as best you can, correct? Yes. Okay. Can you turn to page 116 of your deposition transcript? Certainly. Did you say 16, Counselor? 116, 116. Okay, yeah. I have it. And now you just answered no to my question about your colleagues maintaining communication with Christy Dombrowski, but at your deposition just two months ago, on line 11 of page 116, the question is, what about Christy Dombrowski? The answer that you gave is, I do not, I haven't spoken to Christy in some time. One of my colleagues probably maintains an active basis of communications between her and our firm. Did I read that right? Yes, but you that, need, that's, to, that was you my need to find just the term. If I read you, that right, sir. Now, you, part of the services that you provide, that your firm provides to Mr. Depp is to pay his, his, the bills to his doctors, correct? Yes. And you make payments relating to maintenance or damages to his properties, correct? Yes. Now, you were contacted in early 2016, right? You testified to that, to, to do work on behalf of Mr. Depp? We were engaged in engaged. March of 2016, if that's your question. Right, right. Around February 10th, is that when you were first contacted? I do not recall the date. And you said you were introduced by executives, a guy named Richard Smith at the Bank of California? Yes. Mr. Depp owed a um, significant amount of money to the Bank of California at that time, correct? No. He owed money to the Bank of California, correct? I do not recall that he had an active indebtedness with the Bank of California. He had other uh, commercial loans, but not with the Bank of California. And after you were brought on, you developed an understanding that Mr. Depp's financial status was very challenging, correct? It was challenging, but we had an ability to resolve the problems if they were properly addressed. He had liquidity problems, right? He had substantial assets in excess of his liabilities, but he had short-term obligations that needed to be satisfied. Let me just ask that again. At the time that you were brought on, he had liquidity problems, correct? Can you define liquidity for me? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you. At the time he was brought on, he had liquidity problems, correct? I would define the term liquidity as where the short-term assets are less than the short-term, excuse me, are less than the short-term liabilities. And if that's how you're defining liquidity, I would agree. In layman's terms, terms that, that I can understand, because I don't, I don't speak all the, the kind of business school terms that you speak, he didn't have enough money at the time, correct? He was spending more than he was bringing in, correct? Yes. And you gave him advice about how he could hopefully get out of that problem, correct? Yes. Okay. And just to be clear, uh, Mr. White, because you, you've testified to, to some degree of knowledge about um, wine that you, you, you allege that Ms. Hurd requested. So you seem to have some, some knowledge of, of Mr. Depp's spending. Ms. Hurd didn't, she didn't buy any of the dozens of properties that Mr. Depp owned, correct? Correct. He owned she, the assets prior to their marriage. She didn't pay $5 million to blast Hunter Thompson's ashes out of a cannon, did she? Not to my knowledge. She didn't buy a yacht that she couldn't afford and then have to sell it to J.K. Rowling, did she? Not to my knowledge. Now let's talk about that meeting on April 21st, 2016. You said the meeting started at about 7.30 p.m.? Yes. And lasted till maybe 9.30, is that right? Yes. And you have no idea, no personal knowledge where Mr. Depp went after he left that meeting, do you? That is correct. I did not go with him. I went home. And at that meeting, Mr. Depp was given some catastrophic news about his business, correct? He was given news that he needed to address a number of financial issues, but I had a strategy and plan to fully resolve them. That news that he was given that night was catastrophic, wasn't it? No.
May I approach, Your Honor? All right. Yes, sir. Mr. White, let's do this again with another under oath series of statements. You gave testimony in the UK trial, did you not? Yes. And that testimony was under oath, correct? Yes. All right. And in front of you, I have your testimony from the UK trial, and you gave that testimony on behalf of Mr. Depp, correct? I gave it honestly. Okay. You gave it on behalf of Mr. Depp, correct? You were one of his witnesses called. That correct? is correct. Okay. Can you please turn to page 865? And it's just the second page of the document, upper left. Before that, the questions are talking about this meeting on April 21st, 2016. And you were asked the question, question, now Mr. Depp was given some catastrophic news about his business. Answer, that is correct. Did I read that right? You did, but remember, yeah, that, that was no, my I get a chance you, you to answer respond. my question, sir. You answered I my did question. not define sir, that term. Sir, Mr. You'll have a chance. The, the attorney will get back up and, and redirect you, okay? So if you could just answer his question, that's fine. And the reason I'm asking, sir, is because you just gave the exact opposite testimony here. So that's, what, that's why we pointed that out. Um, now, you at this meeting, you had a discussion about his financial affairs and a necessity to formulate a revised business strategy and plan, correct? Yes. And you talked about the following financial information. You talked about bank obligations and tax liabilities, right? Yes which means money you owe to either the government or banks, correct? Yes. You talked about assets that he needed to sell, correct? Yes. Properties and things like that that he needed to sell to generate money? Correct. You talked about ways to reduce spending, correct? Yes. And you talked about how to get new engagements, correct? Yes. How to get new gigs, right? Not how to get them, but I encourage him to get them. Un I'm not an agent. I appreciate I do not that. Procure his engagements. And the, understood. You, you talked about the need to get new gigs to generate additional money to help uh, address these financial woes that he was experiencing. Correct? Yes. You also told him at that meeting that um, his taxes. He hadn't paid taxes in years. Correct. No, that's not correct. That he had not paid any taxes in years is not correct. That that he was significantly delinquent in federal tax obligations dating back years, correct? I don't know how you're defining years. There were delinquent liabilities. I addressed them uh, and formulated a plan. And you talked about the significant delinquent tax liabilities that would run into the millions of dollars for taxes unpaid, correct? That is correct. And so after receiving these, this catastrophic news, as we discussed, you have no idea where Mr. Depp went when he walked out of the doors of his office, correct? I do not know okay. where he went. Can you pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 936, please? And Mr. White, I'm, I'm not going to... Um, this is a long, a long document um, that we can we can scroll through. But what I'll I'll represent to you and, and Michelle can sort of scroll down is that these these appear to be 
Mr. Depp's tax returns for Mr. Depp and his companies from 2009 to 2019. Do you see that? Yes. And um, these are our returns as part of your um, role as his CPA firm now, his business manager firm now, you, your firm prepares these tax returns, correct? Yes. And you maintain these tax returns in the ordinary course of your business, correct? That is correct. Your Honor, I'd, I know there's going to be plenty of redaction to do, but I just would like to move these into evidence. I don't plan to publish them or anything at this point. Objection, Your Honor. Here, you want to approach? All right, so 936 will come into evidence, but I'll wait for redactions and they will not be published. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Mr. White, you, you understood that Mr. Depp showed up hours late for work on Pirates 5, correct? That is not correct. Are you familiar with Tracy Jacobs? Yes. That's Mr. Mr. Depp's uh, former agent, correct? Yes. And at the time that she was serving as his agent, part of her job responsibilities, to, to the best of your understanding, was to communicate with you about Mr. Depp's financial affairs, correct? To the extent she had knowledge, Right. Yes, she would communicate. And, and you and she did communicate about um, Mr. Depp, correct? During the period of her engagement, yes, we yes. did communicate. Okay. Um, can you pull up Defendant's Exhibit 874, please, Michelle? Mr. White, do you, do you see here this text exchange between you and Tracy Jacobs? Yes. And your, your texts are in, in white and Ms. Jacobs are in blue, correct? Yes. Michelle, could you please scroll to um, the document that, that um, is bait stamped DEP 19246. It's about the fifth or sixth one down, please. Mr. White, do you see here the third text down from Tracy Jacobs to you? Um, saying thanks i got a call from disney last week saying he showed up five objection hours your honor hearsay ER. it's it's not hearsay it's party opponent she's his agent we've i'm happy to approach if you'd like to discuss
Mr. White, um, we just saw the text that I started reading. Do you remember that text? Yes. Okay. We're gonna just going to show you um, and, and move for admission of that, that page of the document with that text. Um, so I just wanted, since you won't see anything else, I just wanted you to, to orient yourself that that is the text that we were just reading. Okay? Fine. Go all right. That page or that text? They're going to redact it, just that one text. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Your Honor, I would move for admission of this document as, I guess we could call it, D Defendants 874A. Okay, 874A with the redactions. All right, thanks, yes, Your Honor. Mr. White, um, you, you, you just testified uh, a, a few minutes ago that you, you didn't have any understanding of, of Mr. Depp showing up late for work on Pirates 5, but in fact, you received this text from Tracy Jacobs that says, thanks. I got a call from Disney last week saying he showed up five hours late for ADR work in London for Pirates 5. I really need to speak to him before he starts work on his ne next project in LA. Did I read that right? Permission to publish this, Your Honor? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Thank you. Do you want me to, do you want me to respond? I just wanted to ask you if, if, I, if I read that right, that you received this text message saying in part, I got a call from Disney last week saying he showed up five hours late for ADR work in London for Pirates 5. I really need to speak to him before he starts work on this next project in LA. Did I read that right? I believe you read it right. Thank you. Now, at some point you became familiar. You can go ahead and take that down. Thank you. At some point, you became familiar, as you've testified, with what Amber planned to do with money that she got from Mr. Depp in the divorce, correct? It was the understanding from the beginning the money would be contributed to charities. The two charities. The so the Children's, Hospital of, Children's Hospital of L.A. and the ACLU, correct? That is correct. And as we discussed, you wrote checks to those two organizations that were part of uh, Mr. Depp's divorce payment, but they were just sent directly to those organizations, correct? Yes. Can you please pull up um, defendant's exhibit um, 1639? Actually, let's do, let's do defendant's exhibit. Um, yeah, we'll do 1639. Thanks. Mr. White, this is a letter from you to the ACLU Foundation dated August 24th, 2016, correct? Yes. And um, as, as part of your, your work for your hundred or so high profile, high net worth clients, you've helped clients set up pledged contributions to charities before, correct? Yes. And sometimes those payments are made over a period of time, correct? Yes. Charitable donations aren't always paid at once, correct? That is correct. And when you make payments on behalf of your clients to charities, um, is it customary for you to send a cover letter like this? In some instances, yes. In some instances, no. Okay. But in and all instances, that there is a signed agreement and an understanding of when the payments yeah, that, will that, be made. Yeah, sir, that, that wasn't my question. My question was just, is it customary for you to send a letter like this? Um, and I think you've answered that. And so when you send letters like this on behalf of your clients, do you, do you prepare such letters in the ordinary course of your business? In some instances, yes. And when you, in the instances in which you prepare those letters, do you then maintain those letters in the ordinary course of your business? Yes. Your Honor, I'd move for admission of Defendant's Exhibit 1639. Are you objection? No. All right, 1639 in evidence, and you can publish it to the jury. Thank you. And Michelle, if you could please just scroll through, Mr. White, I just want you to see there's the, the letter here. Um, we'll come back to the letter. And then there's, there's the check that you're making out to the ACLU. And then there's, I guess, the envelope or something, right? Correct. Okay. If you can go back to the letter, please. So in this, in this, uh, in this cover letter, 
you tell the ACLU that you're enclosing a check for $100,000 and that the donation is being made in accordance with Ms. Hurd's pledged gift uh, of three and a half million to the ACLU Foundation, correct? Yes. And you also write that the check represents, uh, just go ahead, that, that, that the check represents uh, the first of multiple scheduled installments, correct? It was my understanding that yeah, she was going to contribute three million five hundred thousand dollars to you wrote, children. Sir. You've asked me a question. I'm trying to respond. No, to I was actually just asking if that's what you wrote. Would you ask the question again, please? Yeah, you write this check represents the first of multiple scheduled installments to honor the full amount of Miss Hurd's three and a half million dollar pledged gift. It was my right. understanding she was going to contribute the money, and that's okay, sir. With I, my I just asked if that's what you wrote. Let's. I think you've answered that. Can we please? Pull up uh, exhibit 1596. Your Honor, before we go to the next exhibit, can, can I raise an issue? The, okay, at sure. The bar? Thanks. Mr. White, uh, is this uh, a letter similar to what we just looked at for the ACLU, a letter um, that you wrote that accompanied the check that you sent to the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles Foundation? Yes. And this uh, letter and the whatever payment, or sorry, this letter is one that you would have prepared in the ordinary course of business, correct? Yes. And you would have maintained this letter in the ordinary course of business, correct? Yes. Um, Your Honor, I'd move for the admission of Exhibit 1596. All right, 1596 in evidence. You can publish it to the jury. And Mr. White, this letter also says at the bottom that it represents the check that accompanies this letter, represents the first of multiple scheduled installments to honor the full amount of Ms. Hurd's $3.5 million pledged gift, correct? When I composed a letter that was my understanding that she was going to give $3.5 million sir, to Terry. Sir, sir, I, I, I re you're really not answering my question. My question was simply, I, I understand that you, you want to you wanna speak your own narrative here, but my question was simply that this letter says that this check represents the first of multiple scheduled installments to honor the full amount of Ms. Hurd's $3.5 million pledged gift, correct? We can both read the letter and the answer is yes. Thank you, sir. Now. You hosted a dinner with Mr. Depp um, and Adam Waldman in, in 2016, correct? I do recall that. And that was the first time that uh, Mr. Depp had been introduced to Mr. Waldman, correct? I do not know that. Be factual. Now, you, you are not an expert on California divorce law, right? Correct. And you're not an expert on the division of marital property in California, correct? I'm not an expert, but I've been actively involved in numerous cases involving the disillusionment of marriage and the related uh, proceeds that are distributed to each respective party. Now, you can't give any sort of legal opinion or testimony as to whether or not Ms. Hurd would have been entitled to more in the divorce settlement with Mr. Depp than she received, correct? I'm not an attorney at law. Okay. I don't have um, legal opinions. So you've never met Amber Heard, correct? That is correct. The first time you've ever seen her in person is here in this courtroom this afternoon, correct? That's my recollection. And you have no personal knowledge of whether Mr. Depp engaged in domestic abuse against my client, correct? I've never witnessed him involved in any abuse, and obviously I would never met her, I could not respond to that inquiry. So the answer to my question is that it's correct, that you have no personal knowledge of whether Mr. Depp engaged in domestic abuse against Amber Heard. That is correct. I have no knowledge 
Nothing further. Period. All right, redirect. Yes. Mr. Dennison. Can we pull up um, defendants 1596? Sir, could you read the last line of your letter? This check represents the first of multiple scheduled installments to honor the full amount of Ms. Hurd's $3.5 million pledged gift. What was the schedule for those payments? They were scheduled. I, I don't know the schedule because I don't have a copy of any pledge that she made, if that's your question. Okay. Thank you very much. One more question. Has so Mr. Depp paid all his taxes? Yes, he has. He's fully current with all of his federal, uh, foreign, and state tax obligations. Thank you. All right. No further questions, Mr. Dennison? No further questions. All right. Is this witness subject to recall? No. No? All right, Mr. White, you're free to go. Thank you, sir. Just be very careful stepping down there, okay? Thank you, Honor. Thank you. Have a good day.